men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God. A man attested to you by God. How did the father give testimony to his son? Listen, with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst as you yourselves know. I mean, this was undeniable. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. And do you notice, by the way, in that sermon of Peter, that wonderful, truthful balance between an understanding of God's sovereignty and an understanding of man's responsibility? Because I read it to you, listen again to verse 23, as Peter confronts them with the sin of the crucifixion, he says, this Jesus delivered up, handed over, right, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. I mean, this was no accident. This didn't catch God by surprise. Jesus was not a victim. No one took his life from him. He laid it down willingly. This was all according to the plan of God. But did it excuse the men who did it? No. Next statement, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. I mean, you are responsible for what you've done. And in the very same way, I have the blessing this morning to declare the good news that there is a sovereign God who is able to open the sinful human heart, to shine his light into a dark soul, to raise people out of their spiritual graves and make them new creations. Sovereign God is able to save anybody in this room. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what your past is. I don't care how deep your sin is. He is able to save you. However, I am also to declare to you today, you are responsible to repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you refuse to do that and one day stand before the Lord of glory in judgment, you will not be able to say, I am not saved because you are sovereign. You will have to say, I am not saved because in my wickedness, I rejected you. I would not hear you. I would not yield to you. I would not believe you. I would not follow you. I am responsible for my lawless deeds. That's the truth. The voice of the Son of God is heard through the preaching of the gospel. This is how He calls men to Himself. The Bible says, He who has the Son of God has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Do you have Him? You may have religion, but do you have Him? You may have church membership, but do you have Him? You may have self-discipline, but do you have Him? You may have a desire for Bible knowledge, but do you have Him? Because life is found in Him. Salvation is not found in a program. Salvation is not found in personal changes, turning over a new leaf, trying to live a new kind of life. Salvation is not found in new disciplines. Salvation is found in a personal relationship with the Son of God. It is when you lose your life to have him, not something outside Him, not something that you're going to get from Him, but something you find in Him. Do you have Him? 